The title of my message this morning is The Substance. The Substance. And uh, the Bible verse we're going to read is in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1 that says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is the substance. And I would like us to uh, really study what the Word of God says. Because it, uh, faith is not only a substance, it's also an evidence. And as we're going to continue uh, studying the Word of God uh, this morning, we will uh, be able to understand really what, what faith is all about. Because some people think that faith is about something mystical, it's a feeling, something that it's, it's, a, it's a human feeling, but it's not. Faith, the Bible says, it's a substance. So, I like us to think about us, what, it, what does this mean, substance? And I know that the French Bible doesn't have the word substance, uh, and I know that maybe some Bibles don't have this word, so I went to the original text in order to verify if it's really the word substance that is there. And it is, it's a Greek word, word called uh, uh, named hypothesis, uh, which means concretely essence or some confident a person, but it's a substance. So this is why the King James Bible translated as substance. Now, uh, before we, we continue, I'd like to talk about substance so we'll understand things. And uh, there was a Greek philosopher and a scientist named Aristotle uh, that defined matter, and he said the matter, matter is the substance of which all physical objects are made. So there's a, a very important substance, we call it matter. Does that matter? Yeah. <laughs> well, I need two volunteers. Okay, Pastor Jordan, can be a volunteer? And I need another one? Okay, Rachel? Oh, you'll go now you look. <laughs> you can come. And while, while I'm talking, while I'm talking, I'm going to give you some a substance. Is that okay? I'll give you pink. And I'll give you blue. So, you see, he, this is a substance. Now I'm going to ask to go to that table. And I'm going to talk, uh, just ignore them. And as I'm talking, they're going to do something out of that substance. You put green and pork So, use our imagination and use the play doh to do something out of that substance. Well, while we continue to talk, I, I want to mention uh, Aristotle and uh, I want to mention the Greek thinkers so we'll understand what the Bible is talking about. Because the Greek thinking was the, the main thing at the time and we still uh, have that, those philosophies very strong in our society. So when the Bible says that faith is a substance, it's really talking about um, uh, a subject that was very well known by the people at the time, and you should know too if you went to school. So matter is something that we touch. So if you touch the, the, the chair right in front of you, it's made up out of what? Wood. Okay. If you touch your body, it's made up out of what? Flesh. Blood. All sorts of things. So there's material things and we can see the material world, world around us. That's matter. Now, uh, let's think about, uh, before I continue here, let's think about, for instance, the water, the water cycle. You know water evaporates, becomes vapor, and then it pours down, and when it pours a little bit north, like here in Canada, uh, we have ice and snow, and then the ice and the snow melt, and we have liquid water, and then the liquid water goes to the ocean or to the lake and evaporates again and we have a cycle. Question is, is the matter that constitutes water different from the one that constitutes ice or vapor? It's the same matter. In fact, if we study chemistry, we know it's H2O uh, and, uh, and we know it's water in different states, but it's the same matter. So, uh, we know that matter uh, does not disappear, but changes form. Matter changes. Now, let me talk about faith. 
Faith is not something abstract. It's not something that's uh, in, the, in the realm of the, of the mysticism. Faith is the substance of things we hope for. Faith is a substance. And that substance is different from the matter you see around you. Because the matter you see around you it can be modified, can be transformed, but it can be seen, it can be tested. The reason why agnostics and uh, um, you, you know, people that really uh, are just into science, they don't believe in faith, they don't believe in religion, the reason why they don't believe it, it's because they cannot test faith with a machine. They cannot test faith scientifically. However, faith is a substance. And through faith, we can bring into existence things that never existed before. For instance, when we read about the creation of the world, God created the world. How did He create the world? He spoke things into existence. By other words, God created this world with faith. He said, Earth be, light just be, and He did separation. Now the waters separate. He did a separation of waters, which is the same substance, but in two, two different states. Are you following me? Yes. Why is this so important? Because faith should be the way we live uh, in, in this world. We live by faith. You know, the Bible says we need to live by faith and not by sight. Which means that a, a Christian, which is a person that follows Christ, should be a person that knows and understands how to use faith. That's what we're talking about today. Now, we've talked about the life cycle of, of water. Let me go a little bit further. And let me also show you that faith has to do with things. Now, I'm going to ask Rochelle and Jordan to come here to the, to the platform. And we're not going to judge you. This one is awesome. I, I guess you wanted to put the... Okay. Can, can you see it from there? This is a beautiful elephant. <laughs> it's awesome. And this one, it's a... It's a cross. All right. Let's give a hand of applause to them. Thank you. So, they grab substance and they create things out of the substance. So when we look into these things, these are things, right? Faith has to do with what? Things. Things. Faith is not an abstract uh, matter. It has to do with things. So faith is like building these beautiful sculptures. It's getting a matter which is invisible and through faith we can create also things. Those are physical things. Now through faith we can also create physical things but we can create spiritual things. So where shall I put this? Let me put them here. They're really beautiful. And at the end of the service you can come here and admire <laughs> the beautiful elephant. He's eating now. <laughs> so, as faith has to do with, with uh, things, remember that faith is the substance of things we hope for. My question is, what are you hoping for? Do you have any hopes? Because if you hope for nothing, guess what you're going to get? Nothing. Nothing. So our hope has to be set on things. Now, how many of you have a house or a car? Okay, one person has a house. <laughs> all right, I want to get your attention. I want you really to understand what faith is all about. Faith has to do with things. Is a house a thing? Is a car a thing? Okay. How many of you would like to have a, a new car? Yeah. All right. A new car. Now, 
Je vais demander à ce monsieur ici, quelle, quelle sorte de voiture La marque PM. 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 Oui, tu peux t'asseoir. C'est bien ça. <laughs> All right. So, you see, it's more specific. Quelle couleur A red BMW, okay? Tinted windows. Les glaces tentées, oui. Hein? C'est ça? Okay. <laughs> okay, so we're giving this example. A car, which is a BMW, it's red with tinted windows. So when we hope for, for, for this, now we need to have some substance in order to get the car. What do we call that substance? Money. Money. All right? Why? Because in this world, we use matter or we use things of the world to obtain things of the world. Okay? Now, if we don't have money, we need to earn it. It's not going to fall from the sky. All right? So this is an example of how we desire a certain thing, we hope for, And sometimes you can say, well, I hope for a BMW, but I can go to a Honda City or a Toyota Corolla. We hope for something, but then sometimes our hopes can be lowered or increased. You following me? Are you following me? Yes. Now, in the things of God, things of faith, we need to hope for things. And sometimes there are things that need an a supernatural intervention. But we need to hope for those things. Let's say you're hoping to be uh, completely healed, or you hope to have this new position in your workplace or in your job, and you have those hopes. So when we pray in faith, we speak the things we hope for into existence. But remember that hope is an invisible force and it cannot be measured. Now, in Romans chapter 12 and verse 3, we're reading the Word of God. I say to everyone among you, not to think more highly of himself than he ought to think, but to think so as to have sound judgment, as God has allotted to each a measure of faith. God has allotted to each a measure of faith. Tell the person next to you, I have a measure of faith. Okay, you have to see the A measure of faith. Now, what's a measure? A measure has to have a pattern. In order to have a measure, we need to compare an object with a similar object. For instance, if we say that something is one meter, We are comparing the length of that object with a certain object that is kept in England, which is called the meter that they even use it because they use feet and inches and whatever. Or it's kept in Paris, I think. Sorry, it's kept in Paris. So there, there's a pattern, and everything that is measured in meters is compared to that pattern. What do we compare our faith with? The Bible tells us that our faith is to be compared with the, the heroes of faith we read about in the Bible. And when we read this book of Hebrews that talks about faith, then in that book we, we, we hear about all these heroes of faith, people that through faith had supernatural experiences, they overcame, overcame uh, tough experience, tough situations in their lives, They achieve great things because they had faith. What is faith? Faith is the substance of things we hope for. They hope for high things and they got it. Now God has given us a measure of faith. And let me tell you that at times our faith is really high, but at times we feel it really deep and it's low. I don't know if, if what, at what point are you. If you're now in that strong faith that can move mountains, or if your faith is so low that instead of having hope, you're in despair. 
like we tell us, we come to the word to, to the word of God and we study the word and we listen to the word of God, we can actually increase our measure of faith. Let me go to the last point of this passage. How can we operate by faith? Let's read the verse. And in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, it says, And without faith it is impossible to please God. Without faith it is impossible to please God. So do you want to please God? Yes. What do you need to have? Faith. faith. So when, when somebody asks, asks you, do you have faith? What do you think it should be your answer? Yes. Of course. Some people say, oh, I have faith, but I don't believe in this. I have faith, but I don't believe in that. Okay, faith, it's not about belief. In order to believe in God, we need faith. But faith, it's, it's not just for believing God. Faith is a substance of things you hope for. What are you hoping for? Are you hoping for a, a better situation in your household? Do you want to see a transformation in your children? Do you hope to have a better pay, a better salary? Do you hope to improve your life and the life of those, the loved ones around you? Do you have those hopes? If you have these hopes, now you need to use your faith to bring those hopes into existence. Does that make sense? Yes. Now, in order to come to God, you must believe that He exists. This is the faith that allows you to believe in God. Some people do not believe in God. Why? Because they cannot see God. And because they cannot see God, they're just, they're just guided by the things of this world, by the matter. But when you have faith, now you are sure, you have an assurance that God is real, He's present, and He is guiding every step of your life. Now, how can we, can we have more faith? In Romans chapter 10 and verse 17, it says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So right now, just for, by the fact that you're here, that you're sitting out here and listening to the Word of God, your level of faith is getting a boost. Is that good or bad? Okay, now let's say instead of being here, that you were in a bar drinking beer at 11.20. Does that in, increase your faith? Does it improve your faith? No. no. Okay, I went to two extremes. So you'll understand. When you hear the word of God, your faith gets a boost. Now let me tell you. Faith does not come by reading the Bible. As much as this can shock you. But if you read your Bible, this is not going to improve your faith. It's not going to increase your faith. If you read the Bible, you'll get a better knowledge of who God is. And that's important. But in order to have your faith growing, you need to listen to the Word of God. And in order to listen to the Word of God, you come to church. You might decide to turn on the radio or a recording or TV. That's fine. But let me tell you, it's very important to be physically in the place where God calls us to be and listen to the Word of God that is preached in our local church. Because it's in our local church that will be corrected, that will be instructed, and many times we, we truly need to be corrected. I know that some people don't like to be corrected in their spiritual life. They, like, they want to be their own pastors. But it's very important to allow the Holy Spirit to bring into our life men and women of God that will minister into our life in the right time, that will be used in the power and in the gifts of the Holy Spirit to guide our lives. And this is so important. Even in the world, people understand the, the power of mentoring others. If you go to any corporation, any business in the world that, which is succeeding, they have training seminars with people that come to mentor the experts, so they will become more effective in what they do. When we come to church, our faith gets a boost. And we need to come to church in order to raise our faith. Why? Because we want to operate by faith. Faith does not come for, from reading the Bible, as I told you. And it's a great mistake to study the Bible and try to figure out who God is. 
Because you cannot figure out God out of study. You can only understand God by faith. You cannot, you can know about God if you read the Bible, but you will not know God just by reading the Bible. Hello? Are you paying attention to me? It's very silent in this Baptist church. <laughs> Come on, can we even amen? Oh boy. <laughs> All right, I know it's the heat. Now, third thing, how can you materialize the invisible substance of faith? The invisible substance of faith can become matter through something that we call confession. Confession, and someone says confession brings possession. When you confess in order for the power of God to do something, you need to speak the word that comes from the Lord Almighty. In order to have faith in operation, you should confess the Word of God. You need to come into agreement with God too. What are the thoughts of God? What are God, God's plans? You need to be in tune with God. Because you're not going to ask something that is not the will of God. Can I give you an example? First, let's say that you're having great tribulation in your home and you're having second ideas and instead of having the wife you have another one to another wife and you, and you pray God give me another wife do you think that God is going to answer to that prayer? I don't think so because I've read the Bible and I read in the Bible that God hates divorce now divorce happens and if divorce happens now that you're single again, now you can pray for another wife. Or now that if you widow, now you can pray for another wife. But you need to read the Bible, understand God's laws and principles, so that when you speak by faith, you will be able to have the power of God bringing into existence the things that are not. Now Jesus had teachings about this in the book of Mark, Matthew, uh, and uh, you have the scripture over there on the screen. And Jesus said, For verily I say unto you, that whosoever says unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever, whatsoever he says. This is powerful. This is really powerful. This is what faith is all about. This is, you, you believe in the things you hope for, you speak those things, and you receive them. And Jesus said, if you do like this, whatsoever you ask, you shall receive. Hallelujah. I don't know, it seems that you're not very excited about this. About this. I'm really excited. <laughs> Which means that you can start saying, thank you God for my red BMW. <laughs> Thank you, God. I receive it. And you can start to say, I want it zero kilometers. I want it new. I want it... Uh, oh, God, I thank you for what you're going to give me. And, you know, it's not a sin to desire things. Because faith is about what? Things. Do you think you need faith in heaven? When you're in the presence of God? God is there. You need faith to believe in God in heaven? In heaven, we'll operate in another level. But here on earth, while we're in the material world, we need to speak into existence the things that are not as if they were. Now, before we finish, let me just give you a few other principles. What is a mountain in the life of a believer, a Christian? A mountain is a problem in your life. It's anything which constitutes a barrier between you and God or between you and the things that God prepared for you. Are you following me? So, if you, if you're being, uh, if there's an impediment, you cannot have progress in the kingdom of God, you have a mountain. If you feel that you're stuck, there's a mountain there. How do you remove the mountain? Jesus said, you speak. And you tell the mountain, just go and plant yourself in the sea. By other words, disappear. Be leveled down. 
we need to speak to our obstacles. Let's say your mountain is a wheelchair. If your mountain is a wheelchair, you need to speak to that mountain. And you need to say, in Jesus' name, I see myself running and playing soccer with, in the next picnic. I see myself doing these things, and you speak to that mountain. Amen? Amen. And we go and, and we sell the, 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 the wheelchair in the barn house, and, and we, uh, we give the money to the church. <laughs> 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 that, that's, that's not my word, it's the word of the pastor that preached last week in Now, Hebrews 11.1, let's, let's go back to our first verse, we're about to finish. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Can, can we say it loud? Faith, Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Can we study just the first part of the verse, second part we'll talk about later. Let me come back to the verse and say that matter uh, is that defined like a, a, the substance of which all physical objects, objects consist. So matter includes atoms, and those atoms or particles have a mass. And, and different objects have a different uh, mass. So th this is what matter is. Matter is thing. Now faith can create things out of nothing. You know, the world was created out of nothing. But this, that we call nothing, existed in the mind of God. God spoke the universe into existence. And even scientists that understand things, they say, oh, there was a big bang, a big explosion, and everything came out. Yeah, I believe that. Like, maybe it was a big explosion. I can believe it. But who caused the explosion? Who brought things out of nothing? The supreme, we call being, but it's, it's, more, it's not a being because he was not created. The supreme God Almighty, the creator of everything, he decided, he imagined, he spoke, and as he spoke, it happened. Amen. He sent his son Jesus Christ to live among us, to teach us these same principles. And Jesus told us, if we speak to the mountains, mountains will move. Now, this is where we have a difficulty. It's between what's visible and what's invisible. But by faith, you can activate the energy that brings into existence invisible things. And I've seen this in operation. I've seen a person without an arm and, and the arm starting to come out. I've seen things that are miraculous. I prayed once with a man in Poland. He had a, 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 a plaque, a platinum plaque in his uh, spine. And after we prayed, the platinum disappeared. And we got the, the x-rays from before and after. This is impossible. So by faith, we spoke things and things happened. I, I didn't even realize that the man had the, those screws in his spine. But when he came with the proof, we saw this is real. And I've seen it day after day after day. You know, as I walk with God, I've seen all kinds of miracles. I've seen cancer disappearing, just like this. I've seen people coming out of wheelchairs. Miraculous things. Things that doctors cannot explain. Why did they happen? Because we pray in faith. Because faith brings that, activates that energy. Now in 2 Corinthians 4.18, it says, While we, we look not at the things which are seen, but the, the things which are not seen, for the things which are not seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Or, or better, the things that are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. So, see, as the Bible talks about the things that are visible and the things that are invisible. Also, in the book of Hebrews, it says that Moses endured as, as seeing him who is invisible. So God moves in the realm of the invisible. 2 Corinthians 4.13 But having the same spirit of faith, according to that which is written, I believe, therefore, did I speak? We also believe, and therefore, we also speak. So faith requires us to speak to the mountain. If you want, if you want to use your faith, 
you need to speak to the mountains. And when you speak, you don't speak negative things. You speak the things that you hope for. I know that some people talk a lot of, uh, about negative things. Even a church. Church should be a place where people truly live by faith. Because without faith you cannot please who? God. God. Let me give you an example, very quick. Do you have faith that God can bring salvation in the powerful revival here in the South Church? Yes. Who has faith? God. Yes. So, on your way out, if someone tells you that this church is going really bad and is about to close, rebuke that person. Amen. It doesn't have to be the pastor. You need to do it. You need to tell that person, you're cursing what God created. Amen. This church is going to reach into our community. Amen. And we're going to see a powerful revival and a breakthrough in the South Shore. Amen. Amen. Amen.